Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Essentially, what we need to do now is we need to um, round that area off because again, that's going to give us um, make it look a bit more accurate. We obviously need to add some edges going across uh, the object because then that's going to allow us to round it off. So we need some edges cutting through. Go to Edge. If you click and drag over just the middle, so don't click and drag over the whole thing because that's going to make a mess. If you click and drag just right through the middle going across, so you've got only the vertical edges going around the um, box. Okay, and then we're going to click onto the settings of the connect tool, and that's going to give us this uh, window, this panel just here. So we can adjust the segments here, so increase that to maybe two or three. Uh, we can also adjust the pinch, and the pinch is whether you want to pinch those edges together or push them apart. So I'm going to leave that as default by pressing zero, and then I'm going to, and you can also slide them as well. So if you want to slide them up or down, um, but I'm going to leave them as they were. So I'm going to reset that to zero, and then press the tick to apply. Now I can go into vertex, and I can simply click and drag over just the front uh, vertices just here. So click and drag over just that area, like so. Don't click and drag the whole thing. Don't click and drag like that. Don't click and drag this way either because you don't want the back selected, but just click and drag over those front three groups of um, vertices. We're gonna move that out very slightly. Okay, just very slightly across the top and then possibly just a touch more here as well. So just trying to get that curve going. Okay, so if you look now, See how it's a little bit more curved, possibly bring the middle one out just a touch as well, just to kind of round it off. There we go, it's better. So now we've got that kind of curve going around the front as well. So that's looking very good, kind of getting there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating the dials on the top um, because obviously they're both very similar. One's just a little bit taller than the other uh, and possibly a little bit thinner. <clears throat> Although that's debatable, we'll have a look at that. So we're going to go ahead and create a cylinder. Um, now you you can't necessarily create it in the front view because it will be created this way, but I am going to do it. The reason being is because it's going to give me uh, the width of the cylinder. So we're going to click and drag until it's kind of matching the same width as the dial itself. So we're going to drag it out. Make sure you click and hold to drag it out and then you push the mouse forward just to add height to it. And then we can go onto rotation, make sure angle snap toggle is turned on again, and rotate it by 90 degrees once again. So there we have it. That's upright and place roughly in the right position. Let's pull that forward because it's not obviously positioned correctly. <clears throat> Okay, so let's create the left, the right one first. Um, one thing you'll find is that with the references, obviously we can see here that it's not gonna line up perfectly because it kind of comes across a little bit further left. So what I might do is I might just go into edit poly and just pull these, like this right hand side across a little bit more, just to kind of allow me to add that in there. Okay, like so. So now I've got that kind of flat panel that I can actually put the uh, the, the dial into, so don't worry uh, too much if you have to adjust it later, it's not really a problem at all. Um, so then I'm going to go into my cylinder, I'm going to reduce the height segments completely, okay, I don't want any height segments, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be um, trying to, anyway, let's, let's see if we can figure out how many of these, um, this is going to be an impossible task. How many of these kind of indentations there's going to be? So you've probably got one, two, three, four, five, five or six. Um, so we want 12 sides on this, 12. We're going to go with 12 sides uh, and I'll explain a little bit later why we're going to go with 12 sides. We're then going to go into editable poly. Okay, we're going to click on polygon. We're going to select the top, uh, press Alt and X. I believe there's a subtle angle. So if we just scale the top in a little bit with the middle triangle, just a touch, so very, very slightly, not too much, just like that. Let's move that across. Oh, let's not move that across. Uh, then deselect polygon. You can press six on the keyboard to deselect it. And then just shift that across a touch. Okay, now we can obviously adjust the height. We can go onto vertex as well, just to use a different 
selection mode and we can pull that down don't go to the very top just to about here and then we're going to be now selecting the top polygon again we're going to create an inset on the top because it kind of pops up a little bit in a similar way as the front of the walkie talkie did as well so we need to go in flat and then bevel it up again so we're going to click inset now it's going to be difficult to see actually how far we're insetting because um, you can't actually see it in this front view because it's flat um, so I'm going to kind of guess it for now so that should be okay actually that looks pretty ac accurate so I'm going to press the tick and then I'm going to just lift that up for a second just to see how wide that was so that that's okay I think I'm going to work with that um, and then I'm going to go on to bevel that's obviously way too high so I'm going to reduce the height and bring that down so I'm going to match that up there we go and it decreased the bevel outline so it's just sort of straighter a little bit so like that maybe one more click there we go so that's the top done so you can see how that works I've kind of got that effect going on again it's not very smooth at the top um, so if I was to deselect you see how there's you can see the polygons um, so we'll fix that later by sorting out the smoothing groups now there's a very important step. We've actually got to um, create the indentations around here. Okay, so we're going to do a few things. Now this is going to be a bit tricky. Uh, we're not going to make them fully rounded because that obviously can be uh, very tricky itself. So we're going to actually go a little bit boxier, but it's going to give us a very similar effect. So we're going to go with uh, edge. We're going to select all the edges going across, like so. Okay. And then we're going to go across and click on to connect again. So bring up the options for connect. And we're going to be sliding that down. You press Alt and X. We're going to slide that down to the base of, you see those indentations in the front view. So we're going to slide those down to match that. <clears throat> One thing that I actually forgot to mention was if you find that your your um, references are a little bit blurry, you can click in the plus of your uh, perspective view, I think in every view, and if you go into configure viewports, go up to display performance, and actually mine's already set up, so yours will be on 512 if you apply. You see how blurry that looks, it's horrible. If you change that up to at least 1024, and then apply, it should make that texture a lot crisper okay 2048 I don't know if it's gonna make that much of a difference I think 1024 is the maximum really that, that you'll see a big difference and then press OK all right so sorry I didn't mention that before but if you have got really blurry reference images then make sure you change that option that's gonna make life a little bit easier for you okay so that's now lined up correctly um, now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be let's have a look I'm not going to match it up perfectly in terms of um, in terms of like where the position is of these indentations because that would just take far too long. I'm going to be actually going on to polygon and I'm going to select um, every other polygon. So I'm going to leave that one selected. Basically, select every other polygon. Now I have a plan here. Actually, I'm going to do some. Let me try something different. I'm going to select every other edge so just rotate around holding control you're going to keep selecting every other edge so you see how now we've got every other edge selected now we're going to go ahead and click onto chamfer all right so we're going to go with one chamfer only okay we're not going to go any more than that we're going to go with one and then if i press alt and x i'm going to try and match up this chamfer uh, width so it kind of matches with the um, reference so I'm gonna say something like that probably is gonna work in fact let's go a little bit less something like that should be okay press the tick so it looks very confusing but what we've got now is we've kind of got this kind of curved uh, panels I guess going all the way around like so now they're a little bit lower now as you can see that they're quite lower um, and the shapes kind of been broken a little bit only because we've moved certain areas down so we're gonna go into vertex we're gonna click and drag on this entire area just here so not right to the base again just this group of vertices and we're gonna pull them up 
So they're kind of the same height. So the base of this triangle just here is the same height as um, the base of the indentation in the reference. And now to fix this area, the bits that kind of pop out a little bit, we're gonna click and drag over just this row of vertices just here. Go onto the scale tool and we're gonna scale down with the middle triangle like that, just until we kind of form that straight angle again. Don't worry too much if it angles a little bit. So what we can then do is possibly go on this one, scale that up a touch, scale this up a touch. So we're just trying to get it as perfectly straight as we can. There we go. I think that's going to be close enough. Um, so next thing is we're going to be going on to Polygon and now we can select, you see how we can select the two points? That's actually incorrect. Ignore what I've just said. We're going to select all the polys apart from the little pointed uh, spaces like these ones that we've just created using Chamfer. We're going to create the area around it and then we're going to extrude that out. <clears throat> and that's going to leave, guess what? That's going to leave an indentation where those parts are left. Um, so we're actually going to be selecting this. We're going to go ahead and go on to, um, we're going to go ahead and go on to extrude. Now, when you go on to extrude, the default is always going to be in one angle altogether as a group. So that's obviously horribly wrong. So the trick here is if you bring it sort of back uh, closely to the original shape, doesn't really matter if it's not perfect. Go to your drop down just here and click onto local normal. And what that will do is it will push it out based on its local normal. So that's what we want. We want to actually push that out a little bit so we kind of create that indentation on the inside. Okay. So there we have it. That's it done. Most likely I would spend a bit more time fixing up these areas because there's a bit of an angle on some of these parts, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much for now, just because I want to turn this model out fairly quickly. And at the base as well, because the base is actually going to be going down, so just to connect just here, I'm going to click on the bottom polygon and I'm going to scale that in. So with the middle of the scale tool, I'm going to scale that in, not too much, and then I'm going to be extruding that down. Make sure it's set to group again. So it's not on local normal because we don't need that setting anymore. I'm gonna hit the tick and then I'm gonna delete the base and click off polygon. And then I'm gonna be moving this whole object down. Now, as you can see, a part of the top will actually come up, but we're not gonna do that just yet. We're gonna do that later. So I'm gonna pop that in. In fact, because we're working fairly low poly, I'm not gonna actually worry too much about that um, because it's not gonna really affect the model too much right now. So I've got that place where it needs to go. I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna drag that across. I'm gonna hit the okay button just to make sure it's a copy. And then I'm gonna go on to uh, scale. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can obviously use scale and just scale it up like that, which is fine. Okay, but make sure it lines up as best as you can yeah or you could go onto vertex and do it that way but if scale works fine just a simple scale only in height so you're going to make sure you click over just the height so the y or i mean the y in the front view for some reason um, but it should be the z axis but in any case just a node or the little um, handle that pulls it up in height there we go so that's that done you've got both the dials created um which is good you've got the main body created and we just need to create uh, the antenna as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another cylinder. It's gonna be very quick, it shouldn't be too long. So I'm gonna create a cylinder. Again, I'm gonna create it just to get the overall width of that. I'm gonna pull it out. It's gonna be very tall actually, this, this one. So I'm gonna rotate it uh, with angle snap on by 90 degrees. I'm gonna pull it forward so it's in the right position. Okay, um, and then <clears throat> I'm going to scale it in height just to match up. So I'm going to not going to I'm not going to scale it right the way to to the very top. I'm only going to scale it up to just before this kind of top, like the tip of it. 
So around about there. Don't worry too much if it's a little lower because I'm gonna I can fix that quite easily later anyway. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go and convert it into an editable poly. Press Alt and X. And go to edge and I can place some edges in there. There is a different way that we can add edges, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. If we go on to if we just uh, make sure we're in with if we make sure we're in editable poly and then we go on to modify edit just up here modify edit swift loop and as I hover over if you can look if you can see carefully we've got the ability to add edges so I'm going to place edges wherever I think they need to go so a few times around about here because that's going to create that kind of curve and that should be about it really so I've got one two three four going up then we're going to go on to vertex we're going to click and drag over each vert and we're going to simply scale it smaller now if it doesn't line up perfectly don't worry just try and use it as a guide uh, to be able to shape this so we're just gonna oh make sure we go one at a time otherwise it's going to go bonkers um, that's gonna go a little bit thinner as well and then the top is gonna go quite a little bit thinner. So it's not gonna be too much thinner. It's gonna be fairly straight after that point, but I'm still gonna go a little bit thinner just to make it look a little better. Maybe the bottom should be a touch wider as well. So we've kind of got that shape there done. Um, next thing we need to do is the top. So if you go up to the very top, click and drag over just that top row. We're gonna lift that up uh, to the right height. Go to polygon. We're gonna go on to the top poly. We're gonna use um, bevel, okay? But this time what we're gonna do with bevel is we're gonna set a height, which is this one just here, the bevel height, zero. Okay, zero bevel height, and then we're gonna just increase the bevel outline until it starts coming out a touch. So it's gonna be very small. So if you see that, it's kind of coming outwards. Maybe something like that, very slight. And then we can bevel the top. This time we're going to add height to it. And of course we're going to decrease the outline. Just so it kind of comes in a touch. And that's it. That's it done. Got the antenna done. Great. Good work. Um, the only thing that you could possibly do at the base here, because again, we can see that it's not going to perfectly kind of sit in there, is we could just pull out the left side Make sure we select the right model, so the body of the walkie-talkie. Just click and drag over the entire left side and just pull that out slightly. Um, we can't go that far because it's not going to work. It actually sort of hangs over the edge a little bit anyway. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to select the verts here and we're going to pull those down. So they kind of go into the model. So if we have a look here, they kind of overlap like that. Okay, don't worry too much um, if you know you think, yeah, but what what's going to happen with the bottom poly you know yes we can delete it good thinking guys good thinking uh, we should delete the bottom poly because we're not going to see it since it's going to cut through the object anyway um, and overall we've kind of got the walkie-talkie done so we're going to leave it at, the, at that point I think for now uh, for part one we are going to be going into part two and adding all the little details like the side buttons the back um, the front buttons as well um, but see if we can get to this stage uh, as quickly as possible. Again, it's important that when you 3D model, you push yourselves, uh, you go as quickly as you can, because uh, that's only gonna help you to develop your modeling skills um, more. So make sure you push yourselves. If you wanna see the color, we can select all four of those objects, so the two dials, the antenna, and the body, uh, and we can go on to M for material editor. Make sure you're in the compact material editor. So if you go onto slate material editor, this might be the default one you see. So if that happens, click onto modes and go onto compact material editor. And then we can click on a blank material. We can go to diffuse, change the color of that to a very dark charcoal black. Don't go all the way to pitch black. There's a thing we say, uh, there's a rule. We never ever apply completely pitch black onto an object. Um, Cause again, if you look in the pictures, it's not 100% pitch black. You can, it's sort of dark gray. So you can make it just very dark gray and then you can have a look. You can see how that's coming along. Looking pretty nice, I have to say. Looking pretty good. Um, so hopefully that's helped you guys. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the next uh, episode, which should be 
out soon.